Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. And this is going to be part three of our Swift Boat Mark I by Ravel uh, in 172nd scale. And in this part, we're going to be painting up the interior because we have all these windows. There's a lot of windows and we also have that option of leaving the doors open as well. So there could be quite a lot to see inside there. and We, we, we kind of want something to look at. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint up uh, all of the interior and make sure that everything is, uh, if per chance, we're going to be able to see everything in there, uh, there'll be something to look at. So let's jump down to the bench and uh, get working on this. So first thing to do is to go ahead and sort out all the little pieces <laughs> that goes to the interior. And uh, we're going to pick out our ladders and our radar set, and our radio sets, and of course we got our chairs, and fire extinguishers. We can't forget about our fire extinguishers, even though they are quite small. Uh, those would be very fun to paint. And then we got our ship's wheel. Yeah, so we got all that to take care of. In addition to those parts, uh, there's also this, uh, I think it's like a bunk that's going to go inside and the supports for it too. So we'll get those painted up too. So just want to make sure that we get everything uh, that goes to the interior so we can do all that while we're thinking about it. And then of course we need to go ahead and prep everything. So it's good to have these alligator clips so that some items like these chairs um, we'll be able to paint those without having to handle them too much. And of course here I am using my reversed uh, masking tape on a piece of cardboard uh, to hold down little stuff that you can't really clip and that way we can paint one side of it and then we'll flip them over and we'll paint the opposite side as well and this tape will hold it securely for us so that we're not kind of blowing these parts around inside the booth so here I'm going to take a little bit of medium uh, CA glue and some toothpicks now what I've went and done here, our fire extinguishers are so small, I just drilled a small hole in the very bottoms of them. And we'll take and check to make sure that the hole is big enough for the pointy end of our toothpick or cocktail stick, whichever you prefer. Uh, and we're just going to glue that right to it. Now that little bitty part is going to be really easy for us. Well, I don't know about it. easy to paint, but it's a lot easier this way than any other way that I could think of. So the next thing we need to think about is uh, when we go to glue our superstructure to the uh, to the deck here, um, we don't want to have to do a lot of scraping of paint so that we have good contact area. So I am marking out. Uh, where that rear door is in the superstructure uh, because it it doesn't cover that whole little landing there so with a pencil mark on it we can see where the exterior uh, is going to be painted and then uh, that's uh, on the inside is the contact area where it's going to be glued so what we're going to do, and I know that this is probably a lot of masking, but <laughs> I think this is much easier than, uh, say, trying to scrape these areas down for good uh, cement contact. So uh, what we're going to do is tape these off. So this is the one millimeter uh, Tamiya tape. And what I've done is I've gone down into that groove there and then staying on the inside of my pencil line where we have also marked out uh, that contact area. So just inside that area, we're gonna tape all that off. Uh, that way, uh, by using the airbrush, I don't have to worry about it. And then later on, we're not gonna have to worry about going in and trying to scrape these contact areas down. So it takes a little time to prep this uh, in this fashion, but um, that's gonna save us uh, hopefully a lot of work later on now I'm not ready to actually do the deck yet so I'm going to use the wide uh, masking tape here and just protect that from overspray so I don't have a lot of paint buildup um, on the deck area until I, until I get ready to, to do that now that might not be absolutely necessary but um, 
well, I'm kind of in a taping mood, so I think we'll go ahead and do that. And that should be sufficient there to uh, protect everything from overspray. So next up, uh, we, we need to really think about this joining area uh, where the uh, roof section is going to come in contact with the sides of the superstructure. So I'm going to go ahead, and luckily for us, uh, it's just a little bit wider than the one millimeter tape. So I am going to go ahead and tape this off as well, and I'm going to do that on all those edges. Uh, to make sure that uh, we will have something to glue together because paint doesn't really stick well with paint and we we don't want this coming apart on us <laughs> later on uh, so we're going to tape that up and yeah it takes a little time to do but I've got those contact areas all taped up there and then also uh, on the walls of the superstructure uh, I went ahead and just ran that one millimeter tape around that as well as the bottom. So we've got that taped up as well. That'll protect everything from the overspray and we don't have to worry about those areas. So we're gonna prime everything here and we're just gonna concentrate on the interior uh, and the interior parts. So this is the uh, Vallejo uh, water-based acrylic black and then thinned of course with the uh, Vallejo airbrush thinner, just enough for the airbrush. And this is what we have after we've sprayed it. I didn't think you guys really wanted to <laughs> watch me spray this. Um, pretty simple. Everything is black, and you're asking, well, why black? Well, you know, uh, if there's some areas that we kind of miss, then um, we'll have those false shadows already in there. Now, you can see that the deck color um, is quite a bit different than uh, the actual hull and superstructure color. So what we need to do now is go ahead and mix that up. So we're going to make us a deck color and we're going to be using antique nickel and you can see that's the gray color that it is and then a little bit of blue too. So this is royal blue. Now both of these are water based craft paints. I, I like using those craft paints. Uh, and here you can see where I have already put us a little bit of the uh, antique nickel in there and some blue about two or three drops of blue and we're gonna mix that up a little bit here I don't usually show you doing uh, paint mixing but I think maybe in this case uh, you can see that it's not quite blue enough for us because these grays that are used in on these swift boats do have a kind of a blue tinge to them so we're going to try to liven that up a little bit with that royal blue and we'll get that mixed up. Sometimes you have to add a little bit more and that's okay because we're in the raw paint here. We haven't thinned it yet for the airbrush. We just want to make sure that we mix plenty so that uh, we'll have enough to do all of our decks. And this is kind of what we got. So this is the blue tinged um, antique nickel gray color. <laughs> so I don't know what you call it, but uh, uh, we're just mixing by eye here. This is Hillbilly Paint Mixing 101. And as you can see, we, we're pretty close to the color that we need. So I think that's going to work out nice for us. So the only thing left to do is to thin that. And we're going to use the Vallejo Airbrush Thinner for that. And we'll put a little bit in there. Now you got to be careful because these paints will thin kind of quick. Uh, so you don't want to add too much and here I'm just checking uh, the consistency of it to make sure that it's good enough for our airbrush so next up is our wall colors so this is what we're going to use for that and that's going to be rainy day gray it's kind of a medium light gray and a little bit of white to lighten it up uh, so we've got this color here and I put a big W on it there for the for the wall so that's marked for our wall color so we don't accidentally get the wrong paint and then we've got our deck color and you can see that'll give us a nice contrast especially uh, on the interior um, so we're all set to go there and next up uh, we've got our ceiling color so we're gonna be using the white and just a little bit of craft paint here in the bottle. Now it doesn't matter. We're going to be using this for pre-shading as well. 
uh, and then it'll be the color for the ceiling um, of our roof segment and we just need to thin that for the airbrush and of course when I'm putting these into the airbrush we'll be screening the paints uh, just in case <laughs> there's some little clumps that we need to get rid of. So I did some pre-shading here before we start laying down the uh, uh, the deck gray. So kind of wear marks there to give it a little bit of interest. And yeah, I like pre-shading. <laughs> so uh, that should look pretty good there. At least everything's not just, you know, straight flat gray. So uh, a little bit of extra shading there. Uh, that'll look good. So here's our deck color, and we're going to spray all of our decks with that. And in Movie Magic, there we go. <laughs> we're all painted up there on our deck. Uh, this is the interior deck, which is the same color as the exterior deck, so uh, uh, that will be coming much later, of course. And we also have to do the pilot house or the bridge section of our boat, and there we have that. So those traffic areas, as you can see, um, where we did the pre-shading, those kind of come through. You don't want to oversaturate that when you spray it. Uh, that way you can see that pre-shading. So next up is going to be taping off our deck area. And that way we can paint the wall area. And, and since this uh, area where the superstructure goes over it, this crew area, is it's kind of sunken down into the deck uh, of the, or from the main deck I should say. <laughs> um, there's going to be some short walls inside the boat that's going to be need to be painted the uh, uh, the wall color. So we are going to cover up this deck that we've painted. That way it's protected from overspray and we got a nice clean line um, that goes around the wall. And then for the center area here, that's just a piece of uh, paper towel uh, that I've cut out. And we will go ahead and tape that down. And that'll protect it from the overspray. And as you can see here, I think that'll do the job nicely for us. So now the deck is protected. Also, I went in and taped up um, the wall edge there. And then we have a little bit of... Uh, paper towel covering up the rest of the deck and that way we'll be able to do our wall color so next up is the light gray that we have mixed and we can go ahead and spray that so with our short wall sprayed um, we can go ahead and remove this masking tape here it's kind of like a, like a reveal kind of thing I always enjoy uh, seeing uh, those nice straight lines <laughs> develop there when we pull that tape off. Now we also sprayed the uh, interior of the uh, superstructure to match in color. So you can see there we got those nice straight lines. That's going to look good. And then we have our wall color here as well. That looks good. And then down inside our fighting area, the bottom portion underneath that rib, as well as that upper portion of the wall. We needed to paint that, the wall color. And so we've got that all taken care of. And of course, we've got the interior walls of the superstructure. That's that nice wall gray color. So that looks good. Just want to check and make sure that we got all that taken care of. Now I did take and mask up the cushion uh, here on this bench that goes down inside that crew area. Uh, we're just leaving that black. And uh, I think Ravel calls out a color called granite, which is a dark, dark, dark gray. So uh, I figure the black will be fine. So we did mask up an edge on that. And then we also put the masking on this little bunk that's going to go above that, uh, that bench. And that way we don't have to go back in and repaint that. Now we may have to do a little bit of touch up on the corners there on the edges, but that's all right. The bottom is nice and gray and it's ready to go. Next, we need to protect this wall area. So that's the short wall uh, that's inside uh, the, 
we'll call it the bridge or the pilot house <laughs> of our boat. Uh, so we are going to mask that off, and that way we can go ahead and paint our ceiling color. And just a reminder, that ceiling color is just the straight white acrylic uh, mixed up for the airbrush. And this is the same uh, white that we use for our pre-shading for our decks. And movie magic again, here we are. Uh, the ceiling is all painted up nice and white. And I went ahead and let that dry a little bit. It being water-based acrylics, they dry pretty quick. Uh, and then we can go ahead and unmask the uh, the short wall area here that we have and we can see our nice contrast there so that looks pretty good we're in pretty good shape there so next up we have our sink stove top slash radio station counter here and these bottom two doors are supposed to be stainless along with the cooktop cover and the sink so, uh, in order to get that uh, nice and painted up, I think the best thing to do would be to mask that off and spray it. So, uh, luckily for us, the space between those two stainless steel doors is about one millimeter wide. So, <laughs> we're going to use that one millimeter wide to me a masking tape there to get the center of it. And then we can go ahead and mask up around uh, those two lower doors and that will protect that area from overspray. And we have uh, also taped around uh, that cooktop cover and the sink as well, so we'll be able to spray those. I've also decided to use that uh, kind of aluminum stainless steel look for our ladders, so we're going to paint these as well and also the uh, the spigot <laughs> that goes to our sink right there that little bitty piece um, if you can see it there it's still on the black where we painted it before hopefully I'll be able to spray that without blowing it off there so when it comes to our stainless steel uh, we're actually gonna mix some color here now this is the silver uh, metallic craft paint and uh, it's kinda of really light and then, of course, we have some galvanized, which is kind of really dark. <laughs> so to go in between those two, uh, we're going to mix it 50-50. And this is the color that we're going to come up with here. So that's 50-50 of the silver and the galvanized. And it will be lighter once it dries, but we do want a distinctive difference there between that and that wall gray that we sprayed that, that counter. Now, once I get that sprayed, we can go ahead and pull all this uh, masking tape off uh, and kind of see. <laughs> Hopefully, we didn't have anything uh, go up underneath um, our masking tape. But that sink basin and the stove top and those uh, doors are now a nice metallic color for us. And that should be enough contrast there uh, that... If we can see it through the windows, uh, we can see that it is a different color. <laughs> so uh, that should work out really well for us, I think. It looks good. So we've also painted up our radar unit. And for the lens in it, I decided to go with a really light color. Uh, this is Dark Celery, which is a really light green, as you can see there. And... Uh, that looks pretty good for, for our screen. Now, we'll, it'll be darkened up a little bit later on. So now with our interior, we do have a little map table here uh, that on the real vessel, it kind of folds down, but it's in its uh, uh, deployed position, I guess is, the, is what to call it. Uh, but it is a wooden... Uh, map table. So we're going to start off with this desert tan Vallejo color here uh, because that's what I have handy. And uh, we're going to lay down a base color of this desert tan uh, to uh, lay the foundation for doing some uh, wood graining. And we'll have to paint this up. And as you can see there, also the leg is wood underneath uh, that would fold out of the way. 
So we're going to wood grain this. So we're going to set this aside and let that dry. And now we're going to turn our attention to uh, the deck area with some German gray here. Uh, there are these rubber mats that are mounted on the floor section. Kind of an anti-skid area, so when you come through the doors, I guess, or if you're uh, at the, uh, the captain's chair piloting the craft, you've got uh, some good traction and you're not slipping around on the deck. So we're going to paint those in with the German gray to give us some nice contrast and a little bit of a rubber look. Okay, so this is oil burnt umber artist paint, and I've put that on a little piece of cardboard to drain away the uh, linseed oil, and you need to do that kind of early. Um, <laughs> give it two or three hours to uh, soak up that linseed oil, and uh, we're going to be using that to do our wood graining there uh, on our little map table. So I think the best approach here is to kind of protect our wall area a little bit because I can get a little messy <laughs> sometimes uh, with that oil paint. So it's probably a good idea to tape that up. And we'll be doing some dry brushing too on the controls on our uh, instrument panel. So uh, I'll go ahead and protect uh, the uh, bottom inside area there of our windshield. That way... Uh, we're not dry brushing uh, the window frame. <laughs> so this is Tester's Enamel Thinner, and we're going to be using that as the carrier for our oil paint pigments here. So we're just going to make us up a little slurry there, just uh, a little bit of clean enamel thinner, and uh, using a small brush to make that little pigment slurry. Uh, it's, it's thicker than you would normally have as a paint, but we're just going to lay this color in uh, right on top of that desert tan. So the trick here is to make sure that the pigments aren't real, <laughs> real lumpy. <laughs> we don't want it lumpy. We want it uh, basically just to kind of cover, cover up all that uh, desert tan color. And, of course, we'll have to do the leg underneath and the underside as well. And when it comes to the graining, uh, just clean your brush off really good and then uh, use some enamel thinner uh, to uh, dampen the brush. And then we can kind of drag it across the surface there and give us a little bit of wood graining. It's a really small wooden piece, so... Uh, we're not going to be able to do a whole lot there, especially with my eyesight. But uh, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, we managed to do a little bit of graining there. Yeah, that'll be all right, I believe. And that confined space, looking through the door from the opposite side, we should be able to see that. So next up, we've got uh, some dry brushing to do. And I'm going to use this Tester's Enamel Flat Steel because... Enamels for me are the best paints for uh, doing dry brushing. And what we're going to do is pick out uh, the engine controls, of course, uh, because those would be polished down from a lot of use. And uh, also we have uh, the instruments that's on our instrument panel. Uh, we want to go ahead and kind of give them a coat of this flat steel uh, kind of silvery look now of course you know this wall color uh, which is that light gray the flat steel doesn't really show up all that well but we'll add more contrast later with some um, panel liner which uh, help bring those details out and i'm also going to do some wire marks here because most of this boat uh, is made out of aluminum uh, except for the stainless steel parts, and then, of course, you know, your armament that were uh, uh, ordnance steel. So I'm just going to do a little edge here and there, you know, <laughs> give us just a, uh, a little spot. Can't really tell the difference uh, all that much, and it's going to be kind of dark uh, on the inside, but uh, it just makes me feel better to do it, I guess. 
Now what we can do is pick out our dials and stuff on the radios. Now the radios could have been a dark gray or a uh, even green, uh, like an olive drab, but I decided to leave them black because I think the contrast is going to uh, really pick up with our dry brushing on the controls and then we'll go around the edges of the radios as well and that would probably show up maybe a little bit better so <laughs> what I'm trying to say is we have a better opportunity of seeing these items uh, I think with a black background and then the dry brushing with the uh, the flat steel enamel on it so I guess I guess we'll see <laughs> or, or we won't see uh, once the boat's fully assembled and whether or not that was a good choice. And we'll keep using our flat steel here to bring out the edges on the monitor uh, for our radar set as well. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see, <laughs> see that as well inside. So while we're dry brushing, uh, we're going to uh, continue on with this enamel, uh, tester's enamel, dark gray, um, because that's the lightest gray I've got. I, I, I probably should use maybe a lighter gray, but I think maybe this will be fine, because uh, I'm going to leave these uh, padded areas uh, in the Vallejo black, so we're just going to do some dry brushing here and catch the corners uh, of our seats and also our cushions. Uh, and there, and we're also going to do a little bit of wear right where the crew member would be sitting uh, to bring out a little bit of extra detail there. Uh, so that's kind of like a little bit of a weathered look there. It's a really small chair, so uh, there's not a whole lot that I'm going to do with it there. So now we need to use uh, some silver and some red. And these are uh, wa um, uh, acrylic paints uh, from Model Master. And we're going to be using those to paint the dome lights that are in our ceiling fixtures. Uh, the white lights, uh, I'm just going to use the silver for that to emphasize those. And then uh, uh, we will paint each one. As, as they have it uh, laid out, there is a red light next to a white light. So we'll paint the silver for the white lights and then we'll come back in with our red and we will paint the red lights. And that's for night operations where you want uh, uh, low light penetration coming through your, through your windows. Uh, and as you probably know, white light carries very well in the dark and in military craft uh, the red lights uh, help eliminate that while we have the red out it's now a good time I guess to go ahead and paint our fire extinguishers so we will give those a good coat or two of red that'll be a little bit of extra color there inside and I did go in with a, with the silver and uh, paint the the nozzles and the uh, the triggers as well as the uh, uh, retaining straps for them. So hopefully we'll be able to see that down inside. That should look nice. So next up, uh, we're going to coat everything uh, with this X22 Gloss Clear from Tamiya. Uh, and of course that's thinned with the uh, X20A uh, Tamiya uh, Acrylic Thinner. And that's to prep everything here for our panel liner. Now once everything's dry, we'll be able to go ahead and use this panel liner. Give it a good shake. And I will also be using a really pointed long brush here to, to apply that. Kind of make it a little easier to target the areas that uh, we want to use the panel liner on in our uh, uh, interior here. Here we're just touching up around the uh, uh, instruments. There's not much detail there, but we do want to bring out that uh, uh, dry brushing that we did. And then, of course, on the ceiling, uh, we have the conduit that runs uh, from our lights uh, back to its power source. So it does look a little thick here, but we'll clean that up. 
if you angle uh, the part, you can get the <laughs> get the panel liner to actually run a little bit. I think my panel liner is a little thick, but uh, we'll go ahead and out, outline all these uh, conduits here. And we'll also do these dividers that's on our uh, uh, countertop. So that's to keep things from sliding around, I guess. Uh, but we want to bring out and emphasize those edges, and we'll probably try to do the doors as well. Now when it comes to cleanup, uh, start off here with a uh, Q-tip uh, or cotton bud or earbud with just a little bit of thinner on it. And that'll get most of it for us, but in some small areas where we can't really get in there, uh, we can come back in with a clean brush with a little bit of enamel thinner on it. and Kind of dress that up a little bit for us. And we'll go over the uh, everything that we've done, the panel liner on, to include the walls uh, that are uh, uh, painted that uh, wall gray, uh, because there are there's ribbing there as well. Uh, that we need to clean up. And as you can see here, we've used the panel liner around that door. And then we have also the interior where those uh, stiffening ribs are for our superstructure. So we've taken and cleaned all that up too. So that looks pretty good. Now with all that dry, we can go ahead and uh, seal everything in with this uh, Model Master Acrylic Flat Clear which of course you can't get anymore. I've just got this little bit left, so we're gonna go ahead and use it. Now once our acrylic flat clear has dried, we can do just a little bit of assembly. I mean, it is a model building video, so I, I feel terrible that we haven't put a lot of parts on. So we put our spigot on for our sink, and then uh, we have our radio set that we can actually glue on. And we'll go ahead and make sure that that is straight according to the instructions. That's where it goes. Uh, and that's the angle that it's at. I guess you could angle it more, but I imagine they were kind of fixed in place. We do have our uh, captain's chair and uh, some place for the captain to sit. So we want to make sure that it's not crooked. And then uh, we do have our ladder that we've painted up for our uh, fighting position, the twin 50s that goes on top. So we will take and set that into place. I'm not too worried about this coming apart. It's a little bit of a snug fit, so we're in good shape there. A little bit of, to me, extra thin, we'll set that. And then the next item that we need to kind of concentrate on is going to be our radar set. So it goes in the corner of the bridge or the pilot house, whichever it is. I hope somebody straightens me out on that because on a boat, is it a pilot house or is it a bridge? I don't know. Maybe bridges are just for ships. <laughs> so here I'm just checking to make sure that that radar set's not going to interfere with the wall. Uh, we don't want to be breaking anything off later on when, <laughs> when we start to uh, assemble the boat for the final time. So we want to make sure we got plenty of clearance there. And it looks like uh, we're in pretty good shape there. So test fit is always a good idea. And so we have everything painted up for the interior, but we're not going to mount it yet. Well, that'll wrap it up for part three. Now we haven't really put anything really together yet. Uh, just a couple little things, you know, like uh, the the radio set and the spigot for the sink. <laughs> we did that. And uh, we also got our uh, radar set. Uh, here we go. Our radar set uh, put in along with the chair and the ladder that goes up to our fighting position. Uh, so we got that done. And we also put in our, uh, the ship's wheel. Put that in. So, and that's about all the assembly we're going to be able to do right now because we still yet got to do some painting on the hull, right? And then we're going to have to assemble the superstructure and get that painted as one. And, of course, there's going to be more masking and all that wonderful stuff. But that's going to be in the next video. So special thanks to all my subscribers because of you guys I keep making these videos. And if you like this video, I appreciate it if you give me a like. Now, if you're new to the channel uh, and you're not a subscriber, I hope today I earned your subscription and there's more to come. So, 
Uh, until next time, guys. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.